Today, I'm going to show you how to set up the Nginx Reverse Proxy using Home Assistant so that you can access domains inside your local network. So let's get started. Before we get started on the configuration, let's talk about what Nginx Reverse Proxy actually does. So I have a little diagram here of a couple domains. I'm going to walk you through how they actually get to point from point A to point B. So we have a PC out on the internet, computer, or a phone or whatever, and it, it gets on the internet, and domain one and domain two are set through DNS to resolve to this firewall slash router. So when you request domain one, it goes down, and it, this is all in port 443, so it's SSL based. It goes down port 443 into this firewall because that's what it resolves to. From the firewall, the firewall sends everything on port 443 over to this server right here, which happens to be my Nginx reverse proxy server, which I'm running on Home Assistant. So if you're running the standalone, this is similar to the way it works. Home Assistant just makes it easier through the interfaces. So it hits this at port 443, and because domain1.com is sitting on this server over here, I have a configuration in my Nginx reverse proxy that says anything coming into that domain then gets forwarded on port 8080 over to this IP address. And so whatever is on here then gets returned back through the proxy, through the firewall router, through the internet, back to the computer. And then we have a second domain does the same exact thing. It's uh, DNS resolves to this firewall slash router. So we hit it on the internet, 443 again. So again, everything comes in on 443, which makes it nice. So you can just send everything on SSL to your reverse proxy, and then it will handle it at the proxy level. So it hits the firewall, comes into port 443 on the firewall, and, uh, and then goes to 443 on Nginx. Nginx picks it up, says, hey, it's domain2.com. And then in the configuration of the reverse proxy, we say anything for domain2.com gets forwarded over to port uh, 8088 on this server right here. Now you could put everything on the same port if it's on different servers, or you could put everything on the same server on different ports. So if you're running a virtual machine or something, or you have one server that feeds or send, uh, serves multiple uh, domains or whatever, you could put it on different ports and have them all come in on 443 and then resolve over to the port on that server. So in a, at a very, very high level, that's how the Nginx reverse proxy is actually serving content. So let's go over now and start doing some configuration through the Home Assistant Nginx proxy add-on and get these things set up so you can see how that works within Home Assistant. All right, now that we know what we're trying to accomplish, let's, let's go through the steps in Home Assistant and get this done. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go into Supervisor. The Nginx proxy relies on MariaDB to, be, to function. So we're going to have to install that first. So you can go to the add-on store, and then we can search for MariaDB. So MariaDB is a SQL uh, database server. So it's just another database server. And we're going to install this. Okay, so once it's installed, we need to do one little bit of configuration. Uh, you need to set up your logins, and this password is set to null. So I'm just going to um, change it to this. Now on your production system, make sure you use secure passwords and secure logins. Don't do this. This is a demo, so we're going to get rid of all this at the end, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. So now we save it. And once it's saved, we can go back into info and we can start it. And always, when you start an add-on, make sure you're checking the logs to make sure everything is up and running. You won't be able to install Nginx Proxy Manager until this is fully up and running. It will complain it's not available yet. All right, so it looks like it's fully completely installed. So now we can go back over to our add-on store and we want to install the Nginx Proxy Manager. You'll notice you have the Home Assistant SSL Proxy and you'll also have um, the proxy manager. The proxy manager is what we're gonna play with today. So we can install this as well. All right, so it's installed. Now we wanna go ahead and start it and check the logs. And again, this will take a couple of minutes to, to uh, install. So give it some time to completely finish before you go on to the next step. 
Okay, it started up. Now you'll notice here that there is an error related to a certificate. Because I installed this before as a test and then removed it, it's showing these errors. If, if you don't see any errors, then you should be good to go. I'm not gonna worry about this error for now. What I'll have to do in this case is go in and remove the uh, other certificate uh, because it didn't remove it during the removal process. But it's good to go for us to continue. So one thing you also notice is that uh, when you go to the web UI, it's gonna ask you for a username and password. And so what we have to do is we have to look here in the documentation and you can see here that the default username and password is uh, admin at example.com and then change me as the password. So under info, uh, once we refresh, it'll give us the web UI link. So here's the web UI link and we'll put in those um, email address and that password. Change me as the password. And it's gonna make you change it when you first start up. So your whatever name you wanna give it here and then email address. And I'll just do uh, demo at mostly Chris demo.com, save it. And then my current password, and I'll give it a new password. All right, so we have one user created. Now you can add additional users as administrators or whatever you want them to be. I'm just gonna go with the one user for now. Typically in your home install, you're just gonna do yourself as an admin or whatever, but you can certainly do more with that. All right, so now we have an installed proxy manager and we have an installed MariaDB, but we haven't done anything with it yet. This is the part where it gets fun. So I created a domain called mostlychrisdemo.com in my DNS um, setup. Uh, whatever you use to do that, uh, whatever DNS provider you use, you need to create a domain so you have something to use. Once you do that, then you can come over here to hosts under proxy hosts. Uh, and this is what we're gonna set our proxy host. So I'm gonna add a proxy host and it's all UI based, which is really nice. And my domain name again is gonna be whatever this is gonna be. Now, this is just an example. I'm gonna use a real domain. All right, and then the scheme, because I'm gonna send this over to my demo home assistant instance. One of the uses for in, uh, reverse proxy or Nginx proxy is to be able to access your home assistant instance from outside without having to open up non-standard ports. So I'm gonna forward this to the IP address of my demo home assistant instance on the port that it's on. Now I'm not running this on SSL based internally in my network. So it's gonna forward this over to that device, that server on non SSL port, which is 8123. Very important is that you use WebSocket support so that all of the traffic on the WebSockets can traverse the proxy or stuff isn't going to work. All right, so now we have this set up here. It's also publicly accessible because we don't have any access lists. I'm gonna leave this one publicly accessible because you can forward or you can rely on the Home Assistant authentication to do the authentication for you. You can set up username and password for the proxy itself um, if you wanna do that. All right, so we're gonna skip custom locations. We're gonna go straight to SSL. Now there's no SSL certificate on uh, nginx.mostlychrisdemo.com, so we're gonna request one. And the way you do that is you just request a new SSL certificate. And this is gonna be the email address for that domain. And we're gonna use a DNS challenge. Now DNS challenge allow you to, uh, allows this plugin to go out to the DNS provider, configure a text value, and then it will check to make sure that you're the owner of the domain and that the text value matches what it puts in that, that uh, DNS server. If it verifies all of that, then it will issue the SSL certificate. So it's a an, an DNS challenge. You can do other challenges as well, or do if you don't do DNS challenge, let's say we uncheck this box, it's gonna to try to connect to this host on port, I believe it's gonna be port 80. So you're gonna to have to open up port 80, at least temporarily, forward it over to this um, 
device that you're running this on. So then when it tries to resolve that DNS address for demo or nginx. Uh, mostly Chris demo .com, that it will come back over. And I can show you that a little bit better here. Whenever it makes the request, because these domains, and let's just call this nginx.mostlychristdemo.com, because these domains point to this firewall, it's gonna come back over here, check this, send it over here to the plugin where the plugin is sitting. If it's all good, then it will issue the certificate. The, the caveat or the kind of the con to that is that you have to open that port 80 up, at least while you're trying the authentication. And so if you have a bunch of domains that you're trying to authenticate, Every time one, is, one expires and needs to be authenticated, it's got to do this whole process of opening ports. I like the DNS challenge. And if you look here, there are just tons and tons and tons of DNS providers that you can do this with. You can see all of these different providers that allow you, uh, this plugin to talk to their API or their system uh, to, to do this kind of DNS challenge authentication. Now, I'm not going to tell you that every one of these is super easy, nor is it the same. I happen to use Google as my DNS provider. With that one, even though I'm using the Google domains uh, for some of my domains, I have to use the Google Cloud uh, control panel because that's the only thing that this API that Google provides works with. So I've created this domain in my Cloud DNS control panel. And so this particular domain sits there and I'd be, that's beyond the scope of this particular video. Uh, you have to go through and create service accounts and do a bunch of other things in order to get um, the, the credentials that you need here. And that's what this credentials file is. You have to get the credentials file generated from the cloud DNS and then put it here for it to be able to talk to that API and do some work. If you mess with the nest integration, you kind of get what I'm talking about. You got to go through a lot of, of uh, steps to get that done. Um, so, other providers may be simpler to use. I don't know that for sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put in the credentials file content that I've already gotten from this. And then we're gonna submit it for um, the, the certificate uh, creation. So let me go ahead and get the uh, credentials files content. Okay, so I've pasted the credentials files content in this uh, box. Uh, propagation second, I leave that blank. What this does is it waits this amount of time. Default is 60 seconds. Um, for it to go out, put the stuff on that API and then be able to query it 60 seconds later. If your DNS provider requires a longer uh, propagation time, you can set that in here and it will wait that period of time before checking to see if that text value has been put into the API. And of course, my email address for Let's Encrypt, you need to agree to the Let's Encrypt terms of service, which you can read. Uh, make sure you agree to what those say. And then of course, under advanced, I don't do anything here. You can do a custom Nginx variable setup, but we don't need to do that for, for what I'm showing today. And then we can go ahead and save. And then we'll wait the time that the DNS propagation timeout set to, which in my case is 60 seconds. And if you don't get any errors, then your certificate will be issued. Okay, so if that little pop-up box closes and everything works like it's supposed to, then what we have here is we have a, a source, which is going to be this nginx.mostlychrisdemo uh, domain. And then the destination is going to be what we set in that configuration, which is the IP address and port of my uh, demo home assistant little device. And of course, you notice here it's HTTP and not HTTPS. The SSL is generated by Let's Encrypt. Access is public because we haven't created any access list and the status is online. And you can click here if you need to disable or edit or even delete this stuff. So if, if you have to come back in here and do anything, you can do some uh, extra editing and so forth here. So I'm gonna create a second domain and this time we're gonna assign a, an access list to that. But first let's create an access list. So I'm gonna add an access list and I'm gonna give it authorized uh, users or just authorize that's good enough and I'm going to do a satisfy any and then for access I'm going to or for authorization I'm going to use a username and password and I'll do a demo and the password of course will be demo and we'll save that and what that's going to do is allow us to apply a password to the proxy side of things before it gets passed on 
to the rest of the network. So when you apply a password, it stops here. So if you query the, let's say you go to, to domain two, hits the internet, comes here, hits this firewall. It'll push it on to port 443 on the proxy, but the proxy is gonna say, I need the username and password before it pushes it on over to here. So that's what the user list is gonna do. When I set satisfy any, that means that it will either satisfy, be satisfied by the demo or the username and password being correct or this access list being uh, fulfilled. We'll go through the same process of creating a proxy. I'll do it again for you so that you can uh, see a second time how it works and get a good idea. So again, hosts, proxy hosts, we have the one already created. Let's add another proxy host. This time it's gonna be ADSB, mostly Chris demo.com and that ADSB I have an ADSB receiver um, that collects aircraft ADSB data and feeds it to flight radar flight aware uh, a bunch of other those flight services and so I want to be able to look at a moving map that comes with that so the host name or IP for this is going to be and the port's going to be port 80 um, again WebSocket support now this time, instead of being publicly accessible, we wanna go ahead and click on and add it to the authorized users access list. So you can't access it unless you have the username and password. We're gonna do the same thing we did with SSL. We're going to request a new certificate and automatically request a certificate for the domain that you set within that first part uh, using a DNS challenge. And one of the things Google says is the data or th this, when you're using the credentials file, the data is going to be stored as plain text in the database and in a file. So keep that in mind when you're storing this information on the server. And for this, once again, I will take the content of the uh, Google file or the credentials file and place that in there. And then propagation will stay the same. Uh, email address is already set. And then of course, agree to the terms again, go up to advanced and nothing there and we'll just save it. And now we wait for it to generate the certificate and hopefully with no errors. Okay, so now we have another uh, proxy host added here and it's access is authorized user, still using Let's Encrypt and it's going over to this IP with this port and the status is online. That's as simple as it is for building out a reverse proxy uh, using Home Assistant, the add-on uh, with MariaDB and the Engine X Reverse Proxy add-on. If you want to manage your SSL certificates, you can come over here and you can renew them or you can delete those. You can also add an SSL certificate directly uh, from here using Let's Encrypt, Let's Encrypt or doing it custom. And of course, that gets into a little bit more advanced thing. Okay, so since I can't show you this on my local network, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I'm coming from my phone outside of my network using the proxy. So first, first we'll go to nginx.mostlychrisdemo.com. And of course it asks me for my, my uh, home assistant login uh, for this particular demo device. And there I am, I'm logged into home assistant using my uh, proxy, so it's going if we go back and look at our video here, it's going from here, which is, let's assume my phone, here through port 443 through my firewall, over to the proxy and then over to you know my HA server. And then let's assume this is the ADSB device that we set up. So let's go look at that one. So we'll go to adsb.mostlychrisdemo.com. And again, this one has to be HTTPS. And now remember on this one, we set up the username and password authentication list. So we're asking the proxy now is asking me for a username and password to access this particular pass through. And now you can see that it has passed through to my uh, FlightAware Raspberry Pi that's running in my attic. That's how the Nginx proxy works. That's how you set it up in Home Assistant using the supervised version of Home Assistant with the UI settings. So let me know if you have any questions down below. Leave me comments. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and then also subscribe. Uh, subscribing doesn't cost you anything, but it sure does help my channel grow and helps me be able to make these videos for you. 
and we will see you on the next video.